Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to continue learning how to draw and we're going to start a section on perspective. Perspective is a technique that was discovered in the Renaissance and it's a way to draw that imitates the way we see things with our eyes. We see in perspective and it helps us represent three-dimensional things on a two-dimensional surface like a piece of paper or a screen. Um, perspective is great for drawing backgrounds or drawing objects, especially man-made objects and backgrounds and making them look realistic, making them look like the way we see things. Let's learn about perspective. Okay, so let's take a quick look at medieval art. And just notice the lack of detail, the lack of like um, figure drawing skills and proportions, the different sizes of things. Uh, let's look at this one here. And this is from the 14th century. So I mean, look at the castle, it just doesn't have any dimension. And the people are way out of scale, right? Obviously just, just no sense of like scale uh, relative to the background. Even the people are different scales from each other. Okay, no, just the figure drawing skills. I mean, you can see all the detail in the faces, but just not, just off proportionally and definitely off proportionally from the body and not much in the way of detail in the background. Okay, here we go, we got a really detailed drawing, really tried hard, but if you look at the people, the proportions still are way off, the heads are really small, the bodies are really tall and lanky, and then check out the background, just, I'm not sure what's going on in the background in terms of like, I can see the other, they have a sense of the castle far away being very small in relation to the castle in front, but the eye line is kind of all off. And even then the castle, that's kind of, you can see the edge of close up. You can see like, it looks like an aerial view of that like part within the wall, but the castle and the windows are not in scale to the people that are to the left of them. So, so kind of off trying to get some things correct. And, and this looks like they really put a lot of effort into it in terms of the shading and the drapery, but in the background even, yet perspective is still off. Okay, so let's just think about this for a second. In ancient Greece, so this is going back like, you know, over a thousand years before that art, look at how good they were at like figures and sculpting and the anatomy. So this is going back about almost 2000 years before the last Renaissance piece we saw and just much better at anatomy and uh, the uh, sculpture and art skills in general. And this is Greek art. So this is going back quite a ways. Yet still uh, looks good. Just has a different, like a stylistic thing about it. But to the people, look a lot better. And there are some scale issues, but I don't know if that was intentional or not. Okay, and here's another uh, one. A lot of their drawings that we have surviving are on vases. That's why we're looking at these. But yeah, just different. Very stylistic. Very graphic, almost in style. And here's some Roman art, which came later than the Greek art. This is going to right around the turn from BC to AD. And you can see here that their sculpting skills and their figure drawing um, or figure abilities are still really good. They built these incredible structures. They knew how to make concrete, which is why they lasted so long. And we have a lot of them today, just incredible artisans. Okay, so let's think about this for a sec. So let's go back to the um, medieval art and look at a picture here. Now, remember, this is, this one in particular is 1,500 years later than that Roman stuff and even more than the Greek. And look at the skills just not there when you compare it. So why is that? Why is all that earlier medieval art that we saw uh, not up to par with the stuff from, you know, over a thousand years before it? So there was a Greek philosophy that permeated society. The Greeks are kind of the foundation of Western society. And this idea that the physical was bad and spiritual was good just permeated, even when we were moved into like the Western world being dominated by Christianity, it permeated uh, those ideas as well. So all the way through the medieval times, they didn't put much emphasis on anything physical. So you can see how it kind of played out in their art and they kind of lost a lot of those uh, skills that, you know, even the Romans and the Greeks had in terms of their ability to sculpt and make some really beautiful figures. And I think even the drawing style of the Greeks was, was uh, pretty cool and stylistic compared to uh, a lot of the medieval stuff. So what happened in the Renaissance? So Renaissance, the ideas changed again, and it came again through, um, 
through the church. So philosophers and theologians started to think of the everything physical having value, and, and they gave it value again in their thinking, and it also seeped into uh, art and the way people pursued art. And you can see all the detail here in the, in the Renaissance, and you can see this here, like the, the figures, the, the attention to detail, all the effort put into it. You can tell there's a huge difference from some of those medieval things. You can also see in this one here, this uh, intricate background, right? So not just concentrating on the figures and, you know, the, the ones we saw with like the big heads and the small bodies and all this stuff and really no background. This one's got a lot of background and a lot of detail, really trying to work on it. Still didn't quite have perspective down at this point, but you can kind of see the shift in the way things were going here. And there's a lot of crossover. So if you look at the dates, some of them the overlap and some of the, the art that I would say isn't as good and some of the art that's looking a lot better. But then this is a big thing that happened during the Renaissance time. And they found the vanishing point. And this is what pertains to us with perspective. They found how to use the vanishing point and horizon line and create some very realistic uh, pictures and paintings. So if you look at this painting here, again, from the 14th century, so you can kind of see how some of the art crossed over. But you can see that there's a good sense of their vanishing point and horizon line and perspective. And you can see the convergence from all those lines going to one point, which is, which is one point perspective drawing or painting like this. Okay, here's another one from uh, the later 14th century. And you can see here that the ground and the size of the people and uh, just is starting to look a lot more realistic in terms of how we see things. And um, just way, a much better sense of a scale in the background. And they've got a vanishing point in there and that's how they're getting those uh, receding spaces in the floor. Okay, here's another painting here from the early 15th century. And just, again, you've got a good sense of scale between the people in the far back, the people in the front, the buildings, a sense of vanishing point, horizon line, as we have those lines going towards a vanishing point, even off the page a little bit or off their uh, canvas. Okay, here's another one here. And again, good sense of perspective. And we can look here and see the vanishing point. You can see those lines converging on the horizon line on that vanishing point which is on the horizon line. Okay, so let's break down the basics now of perspective. So the first thing we need to take note of is the horizon line. So what's the horizon line? Simply where the ground meets the sky. So the earth is round and the surface curves away eventually, right? We're very small in it, so it's hard to notice, but eventually it curves out of our view and that's the horizon line. There it is, ground meets the sky. First thing we need to recognize when thinking about perspective and approaching drawing it. So even when you're up high, the horizon line is still there, right? Earth still curves away. But the thing we need to take note of is that it's always even with your eyes. So this doesn't have anything to do with a placement in the frame, but just that it's even with your eyes. So once again, if you're down low, almost sea level, it's still even with your eyes. Or if you're up high in a plane, it's also even with your eyes. Okay, next thing we need to take note of is this. So when you're looking at a scene like this, we always have a horizon line, right? It's, it's there, there may be things in the way, there may be trees, there may be houses, whatever, but you can still kind of get a sense of where it is, kind of everything kind of starts to drop off. Okay, there's also something called the vanishing point. And this is the point where things that are parallel seem to vanish and come together to, at, at a point. And it, easily seen here on this train tracks where you can see something that you know is parallel, these two lines, and they go off and off in the distance, they converge together. They get closer together as they get further away from us and go towards that vanishing point. And it's not just the train tracks. It's also kind of like the dirt and the rocks on the side of the road, which is also converging there. And then anything parallel. So you have those kind of streets or the dirt road on the right side. And there's something, maybe a parking lot or something in the on the left side, but they also are converging. And even those houses, if they're parallel to these train tracks, they will converge towards that vanishing point. Okay, so let's look at this scene here. So our horizon line is completely covered up by these columns uh, and it's the, you know, the picture's blown out over there on the right side where it's all white. So we can't see the horizon line. It's still there. It's even with the camera or the viewer's eyes, however you wanna think about it. So you've got a vanishing point. And of course, 
it's sitting on a horizon line. So you can figure out where the horizon line is by knowing where the vanishing point is. Easy to find the vanishing point as well because you have all these lines going towards it. Okay, you can see the tops of the wall, the bottom of the wall, uh, where the columns line up, and just give a sense that, you know, of where they are. We'll look at a few of these lines, but they're, they're all over the place, right? The bottoms of the columns, even the, the columns or structures, hard to make out over there on the right side, but those are all converging as they get smaller. And then you've even got those um, doorways and that, that line or on the side of the wall. All those things are going towards that vanishing point. And this is one point perspective. So, the other aspect of one point perspective is this. One in one point perspective, you've got lines going towards the vanishing point, like I showed you, but you also have these lines that are either parallel or perpendicular to each other. And okay, this goes for the main structures of things and mostly squared off man-made things. Now you can use it with the columns, the columns are round, I understand, but we'll learn about how to draw round columns and cylinders and all that in perspective soon. But just to take note of, these are the lines we're looking for to make the main structure. Lines that are kind of straight at us, you know, not receding in space. So those lines that are orange aren't going away from us or towards us, but all the lines that are going away from us, or if you can think of towards us, whatever way you want to think about it, they are going towards the vanishing point. Okay, so let's just take a look at this closer and look at this one little box that sculpture is sitting on. And you've got those lines, of course, converging and going towards the vanishing point. And then you have this surface, which is not really going further away from us. It's just kind of flat there. That's going to be parallel and perpendicular lines to each other, right, at a 90 degree angle. Okay, let's break it down a little more simply with this uh, picture here. So there's your horizon line, there's our vanishing point. Let's take a look here. So we have this surface on this front box here. Now it's a see-through box, so try not to get too confused with the lines. But you have that flat surface in the front and the orange lines that I outlined here that are just not going away from us. That surface is, is kind of flat. Then you have that surface of the box, which is converging because it's going away from us or towards us, however you want to think about it, but those lines are converging to the vanishing point. And then you have the back of the box there. You can finish off with a line that, again, that line, that little, you know, that, well, okay, not the surface, but the edge of the surface, right? The edge of that surface is not receding from us. So that's going to be a straight line. Okay, so here's some concept art I found just in one point perspective. And you got a horizon line, a vanished point, and you can see kind of the lines converging towards them. Another one. And you can see the buildings. They look very three-dimensional. And that's because they used a horizon line, a vanishing point. And you can see how all those edges of the building kind of converge towards that point. Another very complicated picture. And this kind of illustrates that, you know, the horizon line's there, whether you can see it or not. It's still there, right? It may be covered up by all sorts of buildings and structures or mountains like that. But it's still always even with the eyes of the viewer or the camera. And there it is kind of centered right in that sculpture going into that big uh, menacing building right there, which is an appropriate place for it, because it makes all those lines draw towards that central point, which is the focus of this picture. Okay, so there's not only one point perspective, but there's two point perspective. And here's a simple breakdown of it. And you have a horizon line in the middle, and then you have two vanishing points. So that's why it's called two point perspective. Now, you can never have, to, to see the way we see, you can't have two vanishing points in the frame. And that's just the way our eyes see. Maybe a fisheye lens, you could kind of get it in there, or I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but that would push it a lot more. But um, to see like a human, you can't see two. You can see one point, but the other point would be off the page or out of the frame or out of your view. But to illustrate it, we've got it here in one frame, just so you can kind of see. And here's a two-point perspective drawing where you've got two vanishing points and kind of the lines are not uh, converging to one, but there's two that they're converging to. And this is when you're looking at something at an angle. And I'll illustrate this in a uh, video. Here is another two-point perspective drawing. And you can see uh, lines converging to the left and to the right. There's even three-point perspective where you have three vanishing points. And this is when you're looking down at something at an extreme angle or looking up at something at an extreme angle. And you're going to get an extra vanishing point down below where the lines also converge down somewhere very far down. Okay, here's an example of three-point perspective from a photograph. 
and we're not looking straight at the building so we can see them converging, especially that building on the uh, left. You can see it converging towards the left and to the right. And then you can also see it converging somewhere up off the out of the screen up high. And OK, that is a look at one point perspective and a little glimpse at two point perspective and three point perspective. And hopefully that helped you understand it. And I'll see you guys on the next video.